Hi guys, welcome back to Hazel's channel. This is Hazel and I'm Lily, her mom. Um, today we'll be filming a Puppies Essential video where I'll be sharing all the items that we bought for her in order to prepare for her coming home as a new puppy. And she's about three and a half months old now. So these are all the items that we use every single day and have found really helpful. So I hope that this video will be helpful for you as well if you're also preparing for your new puppy. Um, I found that these videos were really helpful for me when I was looking for things to buy to prepare for her. So yeah, um, let's just get started. So the first thing that I bought for her was her crate and it is this giant metal crate that comes with the divider from Amazon and I'll insert a picture or a clip here so you can see how the setup looks like and we also bought a crate cover for her because I heard that it's better for them to have like a darker space to cover the crate so that they're not as easily distracted by what's outside the crate and they won't whine as much. So instead of having like a blanket over it, we bought a crate cover instead and it is um, measured to fit the size of her crate. And we also have a dog bed in there right now, but we didn't put the dog bed in there until maybe about three weeks ago um, because we wanted to ensure that she's completely potty trained and she wouldn't have any accidents inside the crate. So to prevent that in the beginning, we put down potty pads and then we put blankets on top of that. So in case she does have any accidents inside her crate, which she didn't have, but just in case that potty pad would catch it. Um, but the crate, the bottom of the crate is like this plastic um, covering. So if she did have any accidents, it wouldn't be that big of a deal because we can just easily wipe it clean. Um, but just to save an extra step, we did just put like potty pads down. And the blankets that we bought, we bought one from Amazon and it is her puppy blanket. She really loves it. Um, she carries it not everywhere but like she loves playing with it and right now right now it's inside her dog bed that you see behind me right here and this was the dog bed that we bought recently too um we wanted her to have like a place for her to rest in and she's in the living room chilling with us so we just bought that from tj maxx that one is about half the price that I saw for it going on Amazon, so I highly recommend getting your dog beds from TJ Maxx or Marshalls because they have such a good deal on dog beds um, instead of like paying full price for it on Amazon. I think that one, I think it's a donut one, so it's going for about 100 or so for her size, which is an extra large size, and she's going to grow into it, but for 100 something for a dog bed, I didn't think it was that worth it. Um, simply like if she pees in it right now or if she tries to like bite it or tear it apart or destroy it um, that was not going to be like the best use of our money so we just purchased it from TJ Maxx and one thing I want to talk about is her snuggle puppy so this is a highly recommended if you're bringing home a new puppy she absolutely loves this thing and we love it too because of how well I guess it works so sorry she's playing with her toy um, so inside her snuggle puppy, it has this little heartbeat that you can turn on at nighttime. Oops. So this thing, you can just press it and it's going to start beating. And it's supposed to replicate like the heartbeats of her litter mates. And it's supposed to help them with any separation anxiety that they have um, as, as new puppies. So in the beginning, we just like to turn it on for her every time she's going to take a nap or going to bed for the night. So that just keeps her company there and she feels like she's not that separated from her um, litter mate. And it's kind of cute too because I think she uses this as a pillow now. Um, when we come downstairs in the morning or like when we come downstairs like after her nap, she likes to have her head on it just like, like a pillow, which is so cute because this was like her size when she came home and now she's using it as a pillow, which is the testament to just how fast she's growing, which makes me sad, but just how great of a toy this is, so. Highly recommend getting a snuggle puppy. The next thing that we bought her was leashes. And I have a couple of different leashes that we bought for her. And these are it right here. So starting with this one, this is a 30 feet leash. And the reason why we bought this is so that she can have the freedom to explore the house or the backyard or wherever. But we can always grab her if she's doing um, anything that's going to cause trouble or if she's getting to things she's not supposed to. So I do recommend getting this one. Um, it's easy to keep an eye on her uh, without having her right next to you the entire time. And I bought the pink one because I thought that this color was easy to spot. Um, if I'm just, like trying to find out where she is, I can easily just spot this pink color. 
and I also have this standard six feet leash here and this also matches her collar that we also bought from Amazon and it's by the brand Blueberry Pets on Amazon and the reason why I bought this is that it's a cheap leash um, if she bites on it which she has when she was a puppy um, it's okay if she destroys it or if it gets dirty because this is just a leash that we're using when we're bringing her out to go potty in the backyard or trying to leash train her so this is a leash that we don't really care about that much so I do recommend getting like a cheaper leash for now um, just so that your puppy can get used to it so it can go through all the wears and tears without you using an expensive leash and a more pricier leash that we have is this rope leash and we bought this from this brand called The Foggy Dog and they do sell similar ones on Amazon like the rope leashes but I bought this because I like the color and I'm not going to use this until she goes out on walks when she's fully vaccinated which is in about three more weeks so I'm excited to use this one for walks because it's like a no pull leash it's easy to hold and to control your dog um, but yeah I'm excited to use this one when we go out for walks or hiking um, or whatever so yeah I recommend getting a rope leash as well as for harnesses so this is the first harness that we bought her and this is a size small and currently she still fits in there um, she's currently 22 pounds and she still fits in this it's kind of like almost at the max amount of space it could um, manage I guess without us moving on to a medium size and this one has a fr uh, front clip and also has a back clip. I'm not sure if I'm showing. Yeah, front clip and a back clip. And um, it is recommended to get it with a front clip or a back clip because it's easier to control your puppy when they're going on walks or just to train them. And it's better to use a harness rather than to connect it to the collar because it's easier on their necks. Um, if you just use a harness rather than the collar because they're still a growing puppy, so. Um, affecting their like, pulling too hard on their necks is not good for them. So we use so so we use our harness um, a lot too when we have her on the leash. Um, also, poop bag holders. So I love these poop bag holders because you can put them onto your leash. The only thing I don't like about this leash is that um, it doesn't have like a place for you to loop a poop bag holder. As you can see, compared to, for example, this leash where it has a little round thing for you to hook your um, poop bag holder onto. But again, it doesn't really matter that much because we are just taking her outside in the backyard to go potty. So when we do take her out on walks properly, we'll be using this leash and a variety of like different poop bag holders just so that it's easier to carry the poop bag holders around to have it on you instead of having it in your pockets or whatever. Um, the, only, the one thing I do like about like these zippered poop bag holders is that you can put treats inside um, if you want to. You don't have to, but I think that in the beginning initially when we took her on her first walks, we'll put some treats in here so that we can give it to her when she goes potty. So it rewards her for potting outside on walks. So yeah, these are really cute. You don't have to get these, but I do recommend getting them. If you just want something cute, but you don't have to spend um, the kind of money on poop bag holders, you can just get something similar on Amazon. But I just chose to be extra um, because she is my first dog. So yeah, I just had like a variety of poop bag holders for, I guess, depending on my mood, you know. Um, also, poop bags. <laughs> this is one of the poop bags that we have. We have a bunch more. Um, this is the one that we, this is like the refillable one for your poop bag holders um, but we have like a more like industrial size poop bag roll that we leave in the back for when she goes out to go potty so that we don't have to carry these poop bag holders around we can just tear one out and then bring her out with us um, when we go potty in the backyard so you will be going through a lot of poop bags like a lot I didn't realize how much they really poop a day which is like four or five times a day sometimes so highly recommend getting a lot of poop bags and try to get them in bulk so it's better for your money. Um, in the beginning, I bought like special poop bags for from like this brand Wild One and it's like pink. I thought it was like, oh, it's so cute. It's going to match this. But quickly you realize how fast you go through poop bags and I was not going to spend that kind of money just to get pink poop bags. So I'd rather just get like 
regular poop bags from Amazon. And I like these ones because they're scented. They're lavender scented and scented poop bags are honestly a lifesaver. So trust me on that. <laughs> All right, so the next thing that I bought for her was actually this furball. And we initially wanted this to put up on our TV council, but we realized that she's not going to be exploring the house that much yet. And so right now we have this set up on top of a kitchen stool in front of her crate. So we just like to turn this, we plug it in, put it on top of the stool, and then download the app on her phone. And then when she's napping, we can just like look over on the app to see if she's napping or what she's doing. And I do like that there's like a talk function where you can press to talk to the dog to like calm her down. And also there's like a treat throwing function. So you can put treats inside. We don't have anything right now, but you can put treats inside and then you can launch it from the app. So in the future when she's being, I guess, rowdy at home and we're not home, we can just speak to her and throw a treat at her just to keep her calm a little bit. Um, but yeah, I do highly recommend this. I know that right now she's not freely roaming around the house as much, but we do like to have this to monitor her for when she's napping or sleeping. So, highly recommend getting her for a row. Okay, so the next few things that we got for her were her food bowls. And we have a variety of bowls here to show you. So, this was the first one that we bought her. It's a puzzle feeder. And she used this when she was a puppy up until she was maybe about 11 weeks old, 10 to 11 weeks. And in the beginning, she was kind of struggling to use this a little bit. Um, she wasn't understanding how to use a puzzle feeder. But we knew that it would be better for her to use it because she wouldn't eat as fast and she wouldn't have like a bloating issue or choke in it as much, I guess. And she's like inhaling her food. So we used this for her as a puppy, but then when we realized that she was getting too smart for it, um, meaning she was eating too fast out of this, we bought this one to challenge her a little bit more. Um, because this one has like tighter rings, so it's a little harder for her to get the food out and she has to lick it um, to get the food out. And so this one lasted a good amount of time, maybe about two weeks, before she quickly outsmarted this one too. So now we have this one that we have. This is the large size and this one definitely slows her down a lot, but she's really quick now. She knows how to use a puzzle feeder. She knows to lick her food. Um, so now she also eats really quickly out of this one, but I do like how this was bigger. So there's much more space to space out the food. So even though she's eating quicker or quickly, she's not eating as quick as she would um, with this one. But, you know, sometimes I like to switch it in and out so she's not um, getting too used to a puzzle feeder. So we just like to switch it in between um, different meals. So like for example, like dinner, I would give her her food in this one. And then for lunch, I would give her like give her her food in this one um, just to challenge her a little bit. But another thing that we bought for her to challenge her, I guess, would be this snuffle mat. And I like this one because you can hide all the kibble in between all the little flaps here. So she would have to activate her nose and sniff around. And I, like I read that like 10 minutes of using this one equals to like one hour running. So I'm not sure how true that is, but she does get tired from sniffing around the um, snuffle mat, trying to find her kibble. And again, in the beginning, she was confused on how to use it, but now she's pretty fast at it. She really sniffs hard and she sniffs like she's so like she's starving um, just to find the food. So again, she outsmarted this one and she's used to it. She knows what the deal is. So I think we might get her like a different kind of snuffle mat just to challenge her a bit more. But for now, this is what we have. And then moving on to water bowl. So this is the water bowl that we have for her right now. It's from Wild One and you can get this one in pink or black and you can get it personalized with their name and you can get little characters on it. And in the beginning, we bought two of these, one personalized, one not, um, just so they have one for food and then one for water. But since discovering puzzle feeders, we're using this one mainly as a water bowl 
And the other one we leave upstairs in the office because she does spend her time with us upstairs because we work from home. So we can have, um, we can offer her fresh water downstairs in the living room or kitchen. Um, and then we, she has fresh water upstairs too. So um, it's good to have fresh water available for puppies wherever they are. So that's what we use that for now. And we also have this travel water bottle. And this is what we brought with us when we went to pick her up. And um, this one is super useful because initially I bought this so when we go to dog parts or when we go hiking, we can bring her own water with us because this acts like a little water bowl cup for them. So you just fill this with water and then you press this button here and then the water will flow out and then she can drink from the water here and then if she doesn't want to finish her water, you can just press the button again and it's gonna have all the water go back down into the bottle which is really good so I think this is one of the biggest sizes that they offer on Amazon I'm not too sure I know that this brand that I bought it from has this size and like a smaller size but since she's a big dog and going to be a really big dog in the future we just decided to buy this one and it fits in my backpack it's travel friendly so I do recommend getting this water bottle if you're gonna go pick up your puppy and it's a long journey or just so that you know, if you're going over to someone's house, like when I brought her over to my mom's house, I brought her water in this so that she has a little water bowl to drink from. Um, one thing that I also bought her that I don't have right now is a collapsible food bowl. So I bought that. So again, when we go hiking in the future or take road trips, um, we can have her little like food bowl available and it collapses and it's pretty thin. And I just stick it in my backpack. And that was also something I brought with us when we went to pick her up. Um, was that cloth bowl food bowl and this water bowl. One thing that I also have um, for food is this silicon mat and I put this one on the floor so that um, I put when I put her food bowl or her water bowl on top of it it doesn't slide around as much. She hasn't really tried to like I guess move it as much but um, just in case and I know that also like the bottom of this is silicon padded so it is again non-step to begin with as well as these bowls, there's still a compact on the bottom but just in case we have the gorilla mat to ensure that it really doesn't slip around and she kind of dribbles a little bit when she drinks the water so it's nice to have the little mat there to catch all the water from dribbling out of her mouth or her fur um, when she drinks water so that's also something that I recommend getting too while we're on the topic of food, um, let's talk a little bit about treats. So I don't have all her treats here, but these are the treats that we did initially buy for her. Um, this was recommended by our breeder. And it is this, what, beef liver freeze-dried treat, and she really loves them. But these are pretty pricey, so I give them to her occasionally. These are not something that I would give her like that often because they are about like $50 for this bucket right here. So... I do recommend it because she loves it and has good sources of like vitamins or whatever in there but I don't give it to her as often even though these are supposed to be like training treats. So when I do give this to her, I make her do like a variety of different tricks um, just so like she really earns it. And then um, we do have like smaller training kibbles which I won't show you right here because I don't have them. But I do recommend getting some kind of training treats for her like small ones that you can break apart easily so that you don't give her one full treat when you're training her or teaching her how to do certain tricks. Um, and then one thing I do love is these bully sticks and she loves them as well. And I know there's a little controversy between bully sticks or raw hide, but I've researched it and bully sticks are much more better or safer for dogs compared to raw hide because they don't split or splinter off as easily. So these are safer, but I do recommend you monitor your dog when you do give them a bully stick. Um, just, you just never know, you can never be too safe or certain, so I never really leave her alone with a bully stick. And what I did buy with the bully stick is this bully stick holder. So you just put the bully stick in the middle and then you twist it and it's supposed to hold the bully stick in place. And I bought this so that she doesn't try to choke herself with a bully stick. There's one time I, bought, oh, I gave her a bully stick without this because I didn't have it yet and I heard like a little choking sound because I think she was trying to like, like put the whole thing in her mouth which is not good so this ensures that from happening and I didn't give her a bully stick until I had this um, in my hand so I highly recommend getting a bully stick holder and also a Kong toy so this is the Kong that we have for her 
We like to put this in her crate to crate train her with so she associates her crate with like a positive place. So what we do with this is that we put some of her favorite treats in there, put some peanut butter in there, and then we put her Kong in her crate with her. And it keeps her really busy. So if we have to step out for like groceries runs or something so that she can keep herself busy and she won't notice that we're gone. And usually when she tries to get treats out of this for like a good 30 minutes or so, she easily tires herself out and she just takes a nap right after. Like she won't even notice that we're gone. So we do this for her when we're going out for a little bit, like an hour or so. Um, but also like in the beginning, we just like to put some of her kibble in there, mix up a little bit of water, put some peanut butter in there, freeze it for about five hours, and that would be like her lunch. And that will keep her busy. And it would be super helpful for us because we do work from home. So sometimes we're not always available for her to like look over her, to watch her all the time. So we just like to give this to her in her crate to keep her busy and also helps with crate training. So I do recommend getting a cop. So another thing that we have for her training are clickers. So we have a few more of these lying around the house and we are clicker training her so that it's easily, um, she's easily trained. So when she hears a little click, she knows she's doing something good and she's gonna get a treat. And it has been really helpful. So I do recommend getting clickers if you're gonna train your dog because it does make it a lot more easier to train your dog with a clicker because they can easily associate um, this with the reward. And also we have a training pouch. So this is something that we have from Amazon. I don't particularly use it that much now, but in the beginning we did use it a lot. So we just clip this onto like our pants or our leggings and we put some treats inside and then we walk around with like a little clicker um, to train her with, with sits or her stays. Um, when we're leash training her, training her how to do heel, we like to have this little treat pouch which is really useful. So instead of having like the treats in your hand or like you're holding a little bag of treats, I think it's good to have this um, clip onto your pants. So it's easy for you to train your dog with and it's much more convenient for you too. So how am I getting this? Um, I think there's better versions of this out there too, but we just bought this from Amazon and it works for us. So I think if you're looking for a treat pouch, I think you can get this one too. Alright, um, next let's talk about grooming. So for grooming, first we have dog wipes. So we bought this one from Amazon. We bought like a pack of 400 of these and this is the third order 400 that we bought. So this is a pack of 100 and these are the unscented ones. We have tried the lavender ones but I didn't love the smell as much. So I just bought the unscented ones and these are all natural. So it's really important to get your dogs natural wipes um, when you read the ingredients you can know what they are instead of having some complicated um, ingredients in there so these have been really helpful for us when we bring her out to go potty outside we like to wipe her paws and then wipe her um, private areas when she comes in so she's fresh and she's not tracking in dirt into the house so we definitely recommend um, getting dog wipes and I have like travel size versions um, in my car or in my bag so that when we're going out I can again wipe her paw really easily and especially if we're going to someone's house like my mom's house I like to have the wipes on me and on hand in case she has any in case you like when we bring her out to go potty we can just wipe her easily without having her to make my mom's house dirty or anyone's house for that matter and I did bring them with me when we went to go pick her up, um, it was like a really long drive from North Carolina to New York. So when we went out to rest stops to have her um, go potty, these are really important so that she can wipe out any dirt um, before she's get, getting into the car. Um, especially because it was a rental car and I was holding her the entire time. Um, it was really good to have some wipes on hand in case she had any accidents inside the car or like on me or anything. But that didn't happen, but again, I do recommend getting dog wipes because you will be using them a lot. And I highly recommend buying them in bulk as well if you can. All right, next up for grooming, we have the shampoos. So this one is a two-in-one pet shampoo and conditioner. We haven't used this one on her yet. We used some other brand's shampoo, which I didn't love. So we'll be using this one the next time we bathe her, which is about... Um, once a month so we only give her two baths so far and she's due for her next one in about like two weeks so i'm excited to use this one i think it smells really good this is the papaya and coconut smell which smells really good so i'm excited to use this one on her and then we also have this one 
This is a spa by Tropiclean and it's for tear stains. So she has like some tear stains on her fur around her eye area. So this is supposed to help get rid of that tear stain. I haven't used this one yet again so I can't tell you if it's good or not. But from the reviews they say that's really good. So I'm excited to use this and try it too. So I'll let you guys know if it's good I guess. But if you follow us, if you follow her on Instagram, um, you'll see us use this one the next time we give her a bath. So yeah, excited to use that one. Alright, next we have ear wipes. So this brand was recommended to us by our breeder and these are just little um, pads that you can just put around your finger and then just clean your ears with. I recommend getting this one. We have cleaned her ear a couple of times before just to get her used to it. Um, so these are really good. I have no complaints. She doesn't have any reactions to them. So that's something that I recommend getting for your dog. So we also have the finger brushes for her teeth. So. We have one right now, we put it on my finger, I wet it a little bit with some warm water and then I put her toothpaste on it. This is the one that we have. I don't love the smell of it but it is organic. It's one of the better toothpastes that we've read on Amazon. A lot of reviews for toothpaste have like good and bad ones but this one has the most amount of positive ones in my opinion and I've used it, I've used, I brush her teeth like what, three times a week or so? so um, she hasn't had any reactions to this. She tries to lick it. She has to eat it. So I think it's a good sign if she doesn't have any reactions to it. So we will continue using this one along with her finger brushes for now um, because she does have puppy teeth right now. So we will be using this combo. And then for brushes. So we have these two so far. And this is the one that I've used so far right now. Um, because her double coat hasn't come in yet, that's why I haven't used this. But because she's still a puppy, we're using this double-sided brush for now, and it's pretty good. Um, she's shedding a lot more now that she's almost four months old and her adult fur is coming in. Um, so I've been brushing her daily just to control the shedding a little bit. And I used it to tangle her when she showers too, so um, this brush is really good and it's recommended for puppies as well. So I highly recommend getting this one. So another thing we have is dry shampoo for dogs and this is really good because we like to use it on her once a week in between her um, baths just to keep her clean and smelling fresh um, because after a while they don't smell as fresh anymore. So we just like to spray this on her um, once a week just to keep her fresh and looking fluffy um, in between her baths. So this is something you spray on your dog. Let it sit for like about a minute and then you rub her down with a towel and brush her out so it should be really fluffy and smelling nice um, afterwards and this is the lavender scented one and it's really good so I recommend getting a dry shampoo for your dog if they're smelling a little funky in between your bath and you don't want to bath, um, give her a bath too much especially since she's a puppy so I recommend getting this brand from Amazon so also we have nail clippers so this is a nail trimmer and this is a nail clipper and at first we bought this one just to trim her nails this is the electric one where you kind of like just like turn it on and it like um, trims it a little bit or like files it down. But we found that this wasn't as good in the beginning. It just wasn't cutting down her length as much. So we brought, um, so we bought this nail clipper from Amazon and it's really good. Um, we clip her nails and then we file it down with this afterwards. This one does come with its own little nail filer but it's like a traditional nail filer that you would have like human nails. So we like to use this one because it's faster, um, she doesn't mind it now, and it's really good. So if you're looking for a nail trimmer, nail clipper kind of thing, I would recommend getting one of these. You don't have to get both, but we just got both because I found that this one wasn't doing it as well for me. Even though they have really good reviews, I just found that using this and then using this afterwards was better for me that way. So I'll just link both down below in case you are interested in getting them. Alright, and then also we have some scissors or trimming scissors for pets and we like to use this not to cut her fur or like groom her anywhere else. We just like to trim the fur underneath her paw just to keep it a little clean looking um, so that she doesn't slip around as much on the floor and just keeps it looking nice. So we're trying to get her used to grooming by using these scissors on her so that in the future when we do take her out to a proper groomers she wouldn't be as afraid of um, getting like a scissor near her or getting groomed 
especially her nails or anything. So I highly recommend grooming your puppy when they're young so they can get used to all of this before they go to a proper groomers. And finally for grooming, we have this um, paw balm and it's from, it's this Musher's Secret Paw Balm. And right now it's winter and I've noticed that her paw is getting a little rough on the bottom. Um, especially because it's so super cold and dry outside, I like to just put this little balm on her and it keeps her paw like shiny looking and keeps it moisturized and it wouldn't crack um, as easily. So another thing that we bought her is this microfiber towel and it's specifically for dogs. And we just like to use this on her after every bath or dry shampoo that we give her or when it's raining outside and she comes in, we just like to rub her down to dry her up. And this is pretty good so far, so I do recommend getting this from um, Amazon if you're interested. Okay, so the next couple of items are for potty training. So in the beginning, we bought her um, potty pads from Amazon. And we thought that we'd be getting a lot of use on them, and we did get a lot of use on them, but because we are potty training her outside um, to go use the bathroom outside, we haven't used it as much as we thought we would. So this big pack is currently sitting in our house um, unused. I've used a couple of these in the beginning just to have them around the house in case she had any accidents. She had any accidents like on the pad, but she hasn't really used it. However, like when I go over to my mom's house or when I'm taking her in my car, I like to just like put the potty pads down like in my mom's house or on my car in case she has any accidents, she can have it on the pad. And when we brought her home for the first time, she was on top of me and I had a potty pad under her like above my, like on my lap and she's on it so that in case she had any accidents, she can have it on the potty pad. Um, so like all the times we use the potty pads were just for like insurance purposes, like in case she had any accidents, she can have it on the pads. So next thing for potty training. So when your puppy has an accident, I highly recommend getting um, a spray like this that breaks down, breaks down all the enzymes in the pee or the urine or whatever. And it's so that they will know not to have an accident in that spot again because it breaks down the breaks down the smell of it. So we've used this quite a little bit. There's not much left in there because she had quite a bit of accidents in the house. But it has been like about three weeks since her last accident because she's now potty trained. So it's really good um, in the beginning. But we just like to keep this around you know, just in case you never know. So I highly recommend getting this spray from Amazon for your new puppy because they will have accidents and this you can just spray down on your floor, on your carpet or whatever um, and it will get rid of the smell. And it does work on carpet because we do have a like kind of like a fuzzy rug here in the living room and she has had an accident on the rug and I have sprayed it down like a lot, I've tried to take out all the urine, all the pee as much as I can and she hasn't like had another accident on the rug or anything so this does work and you'll need a lot of it too so this is our first bottle we haven't gone through a lot of um, the whole bottle yet and I hope to never go through this again so another thing that we have for potty training is her potty training bells and I do recommend getting potty training bells because it's really useful um, instead of having your dog walk to the back door and just stay at the door or just stare at the door to let you know that she needs to go outside. She can just ring the bell and let you know that she needs to go outside, which is really good. It did take her about three weeks to fully pick up on what the bell means. So up until maybe three weeks ago, she didn't ring the bell by herself. It was always us just ring, making her ring the bell before we go outside um, to go potty. But starting since then she started ringing the bell by herself like all of a sudden and that was like a really happy moment because i was like oh my god you're actually getting this now so she has been ringing the bell by herself now which is really good but we have been taking her out on her own too so whenever she wakes from a nap we do take her out um we don't just like let her roam freely until she rings the bell by herself so i do recommend getting this bitter apple spray so puppies like to chew and bite on everything she loves to chew on my coffee table my coffee table legs um, the dining chair legs, like basically everything. So my friend told me about the spray and I got it and it's really good. So what I like to do is just spray the bottom of my um, coffee table legs, just anything that's like within her eye level and I know that she's going to try to chew on or bite, I just spray it. And she hates it. She hates the smell, the taste of it. And in the beginning when I sprayed it and then she tried to chew on it, she was like, she had this like this most disgusted face on and she has not tried to chew anything since. 
And another thing that we have that we haven't used yet, um, we're waiting for the summer, springtime to use, is this flea and tick spray um, for pets and home. So in the summer when tech season is starting, we plan on spraying this like on the rugs, around the house, um, outside the house so that she doesn't bring in any ticks into the house or anything um, going on. Anything about... Do you get that? She's having a bad dream. She's in her crate right now, sleeping or napping. Um, I put it in there because she just caused too much trouble, but if you heard that, she was having a bad dream. Oh my god, that's so cute. Okay, moving on. Like I was saying, um, I don't even know what I was saying. The Fantix spray. Um, we're planning on using this in the summertime again, um, and it's safe for you to spray on your dog as well. This is a really good brand. So I do recommend getting something like this um, for the summertime if you're living in like a woodsy area. We live kind of like in the suburbs but near the city out in New York. So and we do plan on bringing her like to go hiking with us um, as well. So we will be spraying this a lot in the summer but for now it's winter and we haven't used it yet. But I do recommend getting something like this um, just in case you just never know. Okay, and then one of the last things that we got for her was this toy holder. So I bought this um, from Target from the baby section and I have all her toys inside of it. And in the beginning we only had about five toys or so but then our friends kept giving her toys because she's so loved and I'm so thankful for our friends for giving her toys and it's quickly filling up. So in the future we might have to upgrade to like another basket or even the bigger basket. But for now, it's fitting all her toys. And I like to put it behind her crate um, because I don't wanna give her full access to this toy bin so that she doesn't have a bunch of toys um, around the whole entire house. I like to have some toys in here so that I can reintroduce her to a toy if she forgot about it so that it feels like it's a new toy so she doesn't think that she's so spoiled. So for Hazel, um, when she's teething, I like to give her Nyla bones um, to chew on and she really loves this one in particular. This is the peanut butter flare ones. She just loves chewing on it, keeps her busy and she just likes to bring this around throughout the house um, where we are when she's chewing on this just so it can keep her I guess busy and we also have this one from wild one and she also likes this because she likes to chew on this part sometimes she likes to chew on the rope part and we like to play tug of war with her on this and this wasn't good for her when she was like a puppy about like eight nine weeks old because she hasn't developed that kind of grip yet on her mouth and when she was about 11 weeks or 10 to 11 weeks that's when she really found her strength i guess and she really started trying to pull back um, on toys. So this is really useful for when your puppy is a little bit older um, but for now I recommend getting Nala bones just to keep their teething um, in check so they're trying to like bite everything or like when they're trying to bite you I just like to give her like a teething toy to distract her with and this is also something that I would leave in her crate with her um, when we close the crate so that she can chew on something um, and she won't, I know she won't try to swallow this or bite a piece out of um, to like swallow so yeah highly recommend getting another bone and she has like a bunch of rope toys here like this one and she also has this one in particular she loves this one this was like actually a little gift from her breeder when we went to pick her up and it's this squirrel and I do love it and she loves it too because she loves toys that do that and has a squeaker on her tail but this is something that I wouldn't really leave her alone with because she has figured out trying to like tear off the hair and I don't want her to swallow this. So I wouldn't leave her alone with this toy in her crate or any like stuffed toy that I know that has like a lot of hair or stuffing that she's going to try to destroy. But I have been monitoring her when she plays with toys like this or like a stuffed toy um, just so that if she tries to break it apart, tear off the hair, she doesn't try to swallow it. And I've reached into her mouth one too many times to take stuffing out of her mouth or like things she's not supposed to swallow out of her mouth. Um, so yeah, please monitor your dog or puppy when they have furry toys like this or like stuffed toys that they're gonna take apart. So that's it for the video today. Thank you so much for watching and I hope this video is really helpful for you as you prepare for your new puppy. 
If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below and I'll get to them when I can. Um, please like this video if you found this helpful and please subscribe so you can follow Hazel on her journey as she becomes a full grown adult dog. Um, we have a lot of exciting um, content and videos coming up soon so please subscribe so you don't miss out on them. And please follow Hazel on TikTok and on Instagram which will be listed down below too. So that's it from us today. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.